the WWF champion uh, generally worked his home territory, faced opponents who would come in uh, to challenge him. The NWA champion, on the other hand, was responsible for going out and doing the circuit and hitting the territories and hitting the top, uh, working with the top talent in those territories. So, Bruno, can you consider the WWF title a real world championship versus a regional title? Hmm. Well, it, it, I guess it would depend on what recognition did he get can outside I, of that territory. Can I interject something here? Of course. He came to St. Louis, Missouri and wrestled me for one solid hour. He doesn't take a back seat to no. anybody with that WWWF description. This is a world-class athlete, always has been, and he's wrestled around the world. Of course. So, well, thank just, you. But just in the structure, of course, uh, not disparaging your, your abilities or what you did for your respective titles, but generally the structure of the Vince Sr. days was bringing people, people in to work the programs versus yeah. having to hit all the territories for the NWA. That was just the accepted structure. The, 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 the difference, I think, when you're NWA champion, which Harley was seven, eight times, eight, okay, eight times, uh, they didn't have, it wasn't a territory, please correct me if I'm mistaken here, Harley, because you know best, it wasn't a territory. So what did he do as the champion? He went to the Carolinas, he mm -hmm. went to uh, Toronto, wherever, you know, all over the place. In that respect, somebody said to me, "Why?" I was asked the question, I don't know if it was earlier today, what? they say, how come the NWA champion could be a, a kind of a villain in the eyes of the fans and, and, and reign for long periods of time, and why couldn't that be for, let's say, a regional champion, like let's say where I was in the Northeast. The reason uh, it wouldn't work, for example, where I was, it wouldn't work because if you're looked upon by the f because of your tactics by the fans as a villain, okay, and if you keep wrestling the, 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 the favorite guy, the problem was that it wasn't that easy to keep coming up with that guy month after month after month. Whereas the guy that was looked more upon as a villain, he'd go on TV, he'd destroy somebody and say he's, it's what he's going to do to the other guy and blah blah blah. And so it was a lot easier to, to, uh, to, to, to create that villain guy versus the other guy. And so uh, that's why uh, we couldn't have, uh, the, uh, a promoter didn't want to have a person who was looked upon as a villain and have the success it may be. Hardy and others said because he had to come and repeat in every two weeks, every three weeks on the same arena, month after month and year after year, and it would, it would simply run out of opponents if he was. Buddy Rogers, who he and I uh, didn't like each other, I think anybody in the business knew that. But Buddy Rogers, uh, what, no matter what anybody thought of him, he had a great presence to him. If you looked at this guy when he went in the ring with that strut and what have you, there was a presence about him that was very, very unique. He had the, always kept himself in good shape. He had a good looking body, always tanned, you know, and he had that blonde hair, the way he had it combed neatly, not hanging, you know, two feet down his back. But, but yet, as good as he was, it came a time where the garden and all the major clubs died because they couldn't keep getting opponents for him. Mm. So that's, uh, in my opinion, the difference between the, uh, uh, regional versus NWA, which wasn't the territory, but rather, you know. Right. Did you want to add anything to it? No, I think he's described it absolutely perfect. Uh, I traveled uh, around the world, uh, God only knows how many times, uh, but I had the pleasure of being able to wrestle virtually every name that, that you've ever heard of. And I wrestled him in Madison Square Garden. I wrestled him in St. Louis. Uh, being in the ring with Bruno was as good as it got anywhere. 
Well, let me return that favor because I'll tell you one thing about Hardy. When you talk about what people viewed as a villain or as, a, as the good guy, uh, the thing about Harley that uh, I was always very, very impressed with was the great technician that he was in the ring. In other words, if he did certain things that somebody could describe and say that was a kind of a villainous move, but he could go out there and show everybody what good moves were, what great wrestling moves were, and I, I, and I, I to do them with perfection, you know what I mean? And that's, I think, why uh, 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 some guys were able to last. You know, you can hear about a guy who been champion 20 times. Well, big deal if he was champion 20 times than if he was champion for three weeks at a time. Right. You know, but when you when you've been in there for and, and, and stayed in that top level, you know that when you go back to the old question about being special, that's being special and not being repetition. See, like like with Harley and I, and I've been criticized, for example, for sometimes being a brawler. But you know what I learned early on in my career? I used to be a real good student of the game, and I'd watch people like who, who I could never do some of the things he did, like Argentino Rocca. That guy could leap up in the air and he'd just sit on your shoulders from just a and Carpentier. To, to, but what I noticed about a lot of those guys were that it seems like every time I saw them wrestle, they were doing the very, the very same exactly. moves. And, and I thought back then, young as I was, I thought there's something wrong with this picture. So what I did, which unfortunately back in the 60s, uh, they didn't film uh, like they did later years. So if I wrestled, a, 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 let's say, a Hans Mortier, we would do a wrestling match. But then maybe if we came with a, a second match, it would get a little more violent. And maybe by the third one, we'd say, oh, this is the, and, you know, and so, but what it did, I used to try to look at my opponent and I tried to see what his style was and I never tried to, to in, push my style in there all the time, but I tried to, because that made me, I thought, not very repetitious when I had to appear in the same clubs month after month, year in and year out, and year in and year out. Right. Uh, there's a certain person that, not that I don't have the guts to mention his name, because I would if you asked me to, that a lot of people think he was the greatest ever. And yet to me, this guy, if I've seen him wrestle twice, I've seen him a hundred times. Well, let me ask you my next question. Maybe this is where you're going. There are a lot of people who consider Ric Flair to be the greatest pro wrestling champion of all time. Is Ric Flair the greatest pro wrestling ever? Can an argument even be made for this? You can start uh, first. No, not for me. For my money, he, he, he doesn't even rank. Uh, I'll give him this. He's a hard worker. You always watch. You cannot take it away from the guy. He's not the guy who came in there and ate around with lazy or anything like that. Absolutely not. But the, but the, the 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 example I gave a while a while back, it, it was a Ric Flair because in my opinion, when I've seen Ric two three times, uh, I've seen him a hundred a hundred times, and I never liked that. I never liked that. Uh, <clears throat> I I don't like people to 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 know exactly what's coming up. And with him, I think anybody could tell. Harley, what do you think? Uh, can a case be made for Rick? Well, I'm sure a case could be made for anybody. Uh, I've wrestled Rick thousands of times all over the world. Uh, I've never went in the ring uh, that I can remember of and ever let someone lead me or tell me what to do in the ring, uh, including him. Uh, it's just, he's, he's a, a superb talent. Uh, I don't want to sit here and say that myself or Bruno or anybody is better th than whoever. Uh, I think the question's been answered. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me pose this and you can answer yourself. Who's the greatest pro wrestling champion of all time? I have no idea. <laughs> in your heart of hearts, I in your say, most secret moment. I would say I rank up there pretty close, but I'm not going to sit here and say that uh, Joe Blow is better than Tom Thumb. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I feel the same way. I, I couldn't come. I don't think it would be fair to say because uh, you just said that somebody thought Flair was the best. That's their opinion and entitled. 
Uh, there have been a lot of great, great, uh, in the NWA, of course, you, you, you put Harley up on top with anybody, but then you had some other guys, the Funks were pretty good, you had uh, Luthez, yeah, right. you know, who's pretty good, uh, since I've been around, that is, because prior to that, I don't know how many other great ones, but there have been, uh, there, there have been some really, really great uh, guys. Uh, I, I, for myself, would be very difficult to, to just... Uh, say a one guy and say he was the head and shoulders above everybody else. I don't know. I, I can do that. Yeah. Thing, but, yeah. but if we had to pick a great champion or a greatest champion, what would be the things that we'd have to look at? Would it be gate receipts? Would it be longevity as champion? Would it be number of times as champion? What do you think those determining factors should be when you talk about a great champion? We'll start with you, Bruno, since you finished the last a great champion is one who I think that, uh, for, for as far as for the public, one that is found interesting enough to the public, they will continue to keep supporting him because they think that he's great or, or right up there. Uh, what makes also a great uh, champion, in my opinion, is again one who dedicates himself to that role, and that is to, to always see to it that he's in good shape. You know what I mean? That he that he looks the part. That he looks like a champion, and and I've also been very uh, pretty strong about uh, his, his overall conduct. Uh, you want to be looked upon with respect. You want to be looked upon as a guy who say he's a professional wrestler and in, in, in a classy way. I don't like it, and I never did. None of us are perfect. God knows, none of us are perfect. But I think it it uh, it's important on how you behave when you're in that position and to the public as far as to what it means to be that champion you know, in wrestling or whether it be boxing or anything. And I think a true champion is a guy who meets all these qualifications. Harley, is it behavior, is it gate receipts, is it money, is it longevity, what is it? I think it's everything that you just mentioned. Being able to go out in that ring with anybody and being able to go for any length of time uh, and fill those butts in the, in the arenas uh, throughout the world. And there's a few of us that have been that fortunate, right? And one guy sitting right beside me is one of them. And I had the opportunity to be in almost every country except Red China and Russia as the NWA champion, and I, I take it with a lot of pride. Uh, the people that were around back in that year are, to me, the greatest there's ever been in any sport, and I consider this a sport. Another greatest question. 